It was a family affair this morning, having my daughter leading worship. I still remember her dedication. Um, and I was in the service giving thanks to God and wondering, my, my wife, who loves worship and used to lead worship, um, the aspirations for dedication, that children see something in their parents and then their church community. I wonder how much my daughter took on board in her mother's tummy, Sunday by Sunday, when my wife was on a stage singing week by week. And here is my daughter worshipping God. Um, so I've got a little reflection for you for Father's Day today and around the dedications this morning. Um, I look at photos of my kids as they grow, and I will sometimes say to my wife, hey, I can see your dad in our son, maybe a smile or an angle of his face. And this dedication Sunday, we are hoping that these children, all our children, the children of our church, will see the father in us as well as their parents so that they might have this family resemblance of being God's children formed in them. And our dedications take place today on Father's Day. And we celebrate not just dads, but fathering. Fathering by dads, but by others in the lives of these wonderful children. And we do so because we believe that fathering is grounded and generated from the source of God himself. He is many things, but he is, as scripture tells us again and again, our Heavenly Father. Now, Father's Day is strange for me. My dad abandoned me, my mum, my two-year-old and 14-year-old brother when I was 15. Uh, he was working in the Middle East, and after announcing that he was leaving my mother, he disappeared. We were almost made homeless, me caring for my mother and my two-year-old brother, whilst my other brother ran around wild. I found out later in life that my dad had bigamously married someone else and started another family. When he was home with me, he was away from his other family and four boys. So Bev asks me every year, as she did this morning in the kitchen, are you okay? As if Father's Day would stir memories from me and distress me. Father's Day might be hard on you too. And Jez, where is Jez? He's gone kids. He's in kids, bless him. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, prayer, the way Je Jez led us this morning. And what a wonderful dad Jez is. Um, but every Father's Day, I've often not thought about my dad at all. Um, I've been able to celebrate the day and the fathers that other people have without missing mine because my dad stopped being a father long before he went to work abroad. There was so little experience of him as a father that I had very little to miss. Now, I became a Christian when I was 16 and I went to church for the first time meeting in a school hall like this and for the first time, I heard that God wanted to know me, that his son Jesus was alive and ready to meet me. The youth pastor, Andy, I still call him my youth pastor, um, sat with me at the end of the service. I didn't want to go home to my mother who was in, in bed with depression, my baby brother needing me to look after him, and a pile of threatening letters that I was dealing with, pre-GDPR, about mortgages and bill arrears. I tell you what, I, could, I still remember ringing a bank and being able to talk to them about my mother's mortgage. You couldn't do that today, could you? Andy said to me that if I became a Christian, life might become harder. Now, thank goodness this youth pastor who knew nothing about my life at this point didn't promise me that meeting Jesus would make all my troubles go away. But he said to me, if I became a Christian, I would have something to live for, die for, meaning, adventure, and purpose every day of my life. And I said yes to that, October the 6th, 1986. That moment, praying that evening in that service in a school hall, is as if it was yesterday to me. And quickly, I started to talk to Jesus and experience his Holy Spirit. The adventure had begun. And after a gap year, I went to London School of Theology. I fell in love with Bev, who's now my wife, and with what God was doing in Vineyard Churches. This church, this moment here today, moments like yesterday, the Friendship Festival with a few thousand people in Sutton, this moment with the children of this church being 
shown the love of Jesus. This is the ongoing adventure that I signed up for on October the 6th, 1986. You are that adventure. But, but, I have struggled to know God as Father. How could I when I'd not really had a father? I saw the father of my friends and I got a glimpse of what I might have missed. Something's good, something's bad. And as a Christian, I then got to see the fathers of Christians and often something very different about fathering. And I started to see that family resemblance. Now, I learned a great deal about God as a father by becoming one. Looking at my newly minted firstborn baby, Anna, I was excited to leave work in London, rush home on the train, and then stare at her with love pouring out of me for her. I did hear God once, God the Father, say this to me, Jason, what you feel in this moment is a taste of how I feel about you. Now, God has lots of names in the Bible. In fact, in the Old Testament, there's over a hundred of them, and each name is an attribute and an expression of the character of God. Here's 10 of the the most most used ones. Elohim, creator God. El Roy, the God who sees. El Shaddai, Lord Almighty. Yahweh Rophe, the Lord heals. Yahweh Yira, the Lord will provide. Yahweh Shama, the Lord is there. Yahweh Nisai, the Lord my banner. Yahweh Ra, the Lord my shepherd. Ish, which means husband. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is Peace. Now, my children have many names for me. (laughs) Names that express their experiences of me and that reveal my character. Some of them I know and some I'm glad I do not. (laughs) There's one they use for me, Faja. Like some faux German expression. Now, every kid's had their kids come home from school, learn the real German name for father, and then run around the house going, mein Vater, mein Vater. Um, But this phrase, Fager, some faux German sounding expression of pseudo respect, they'd use that word sometimes when wanting advice from me. Fager? It's always the inflection, isn't it, with the term? Maybe when I give advice, I sound slightly faux German, I don't know. When my son really wants something, like money, I'm called in full, father. But my favorite of all, and will always be, is daddy. Daddy when they're happy to see me, daddy when telling me they love me, daddy when crying and needing what they call a daddy hug, daddy when they say goodbye to me, and daddy when they talk to their mother about me. Now Jesus in the New Testament had over a hundred names to draw on for God, yet there was one name that he used and dared to use for his expression of his relationship with God as God's son. But he used this expression also to explain and share the invitation from God for our relationship with him. That God wants to know and be experienced as Father, the Greek word is pater, P-A-T-E-R. It's used multiple times by Jesus in the New Testament. But Jesus goes further. And Jesus uses an Aramaic phrase with this Greek phrase. And we see him praying. There's a moment, I'll read it in a second. Jesus in the most intense moment where people get to see all of his, if he ever had defenses down, and his most vulnerable before God, the Father. And Jesus says, Abba, Father. Literally, Daddy, Father. The two words there, the Aramaic word Abba, followed by the Greek word Peter, father. Now the word Abba means, it means daddy, but it means a lot more than that. And it still does for Jewish people today. Abba is something a child says to their father that expresses deep intimacy, dependency, but also obedience. Only an obedient, loving child can call their father Abba. And that's why we see in Gethsemane, where Jesus is praying to God his Father, facing arrest and crucifixion, we see Jesus say this in Mark 14, verse 35. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said. Everything's possible for you. Take this cup from me. And then as an obedient son to his loving Abba, Father, Jesus then finish his prayer with this. Yet not what I will, but yours. Not my will, but yours. It seems so alien, does it, in our culture? Obedience and submission to a father's will. We might pause and consider our relationships 
to God. We might not have one at all, or maybe we had one that's now faded over time. Or is God there for emergencies, a sort of break glass in time of emergency for help, where he then recedes into the distance? Or is God someone we pray to mostly when we want some things, stuff, jobs, homes, relationships? And we might, this Father's Day and Dedication Day, look at our relationship with God to the one that Jesus had. And it's a relationship that Jesus said God wants us to have with his Father too. That we might understand this intimacy with God as our Father and also the submission to God's will. Now this submission, obedience, strange, isn't it? I want to just try and unpack that to finish. I think what Jesus is saying is this, and we need to look at some other words of Jesus to understand it, that there is something required of us to understand that God is our Father, Abba. And Jesus used some other words to help us. In John 3, verse 3, Jesus says this, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Have you heard that phrase? And then in Matthew 18, verse 3, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Jesus says we have to become like a child to be born again, to literally start with God as a newborn and then grow into our relationship with God as our father, as children do with good fathers. That's how we discover Abba, Father. In other words, Jesus is saying, amongst many other things, to know God as your father, become like a child where God your father is your world, where you love hearing him, seeing him, being with him, where you trust him with your life, where he sits and watches over you, cares for you, loves you, and adores you. And from that place, we give up our independence. We give up a pick and mix God, a God of the gaps to meet other ends. And we discover God, Abba, Father. And then Abba, Father, wow. He can bring into our lives everything we've ever wanted. We often go to God just with our needs in emergencies. But God the Father wants to live with us around our deepest wants and bring us our family inheritance. If you haven't read the Bible, flick through in the New Testament, this word inheritance, again and again that there is an inheritance that God the Father has for us to be known, to be at peace, purpose, meaning, identity. And the doorway to that is obedience, like a dependent child surrendered and submitted into his family. Now the Lord promised me a gift at the start of last year for the next season of my life. But I found myself last autumn facing one of the hardest times of my life for many reasons, and I felt battered, my soul close to the Lord, but my mind and body rather broken. And I remember praying, Lord, where is this gift that you promised me? And in my prayer times, the Lord took me through a remembering exercise. To remember means literally to be rejoined to. And he asked me if, if he could show me things from the past and talk to me about them. We revisited my childhood, he and I, over many prayer times, and one time he asked me if I remember the day that my dad had left me. And I said, of course. And he very gently asked if we could revisit that day, and we did. And I felt like God the Father said to me, do you remember, Jason, how you felt in that moment? And I said, Father, I felt like this, that I wasn't enough. Not enough to be loved, not enough to be present for, cared for, and to stay for. And then I felt God, the Father, say, would I like him to show me how he sees me? And I said, yes. And that led me to read the story of the prodigal son, and I reread it for several weeks at home in the mornings. And during one of those times, in my mind's eye, in what I call prayer imagining, some of you have had this experience, you enter into prayer and the Bible comes alive. And I'm reading the story of the prodigal son and suddenly I was caught up in my imagination and I felt the Lord show me and say this to me. He said, Jason, you are the son of a prodigal son. Your dad abandoned you in a far off land and I sent my son to find you and rescue you. And now he's brought you home. It took 35 years to make that journey so that I might know God as my father. 
And I felt like I'd come back to the Father's house. The scriptures, um, John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. So in my mind's eye, still in prayer, the Lord showed me Jesus opening a door to a family lounge. And Jesus, in my imagination, pointed in and to the Father. And he said, it's time for you, Jason, to know Abba, Father. Now, my daughter, Anna, not knowing about this experience I was having uh, in my prayer life, messaged me last autumn, and she had a dream of me. And the dream that she had was this. I was running around, she was going around a large house that we'd inherited. Apparently, it was in Cheam. Don't know why Cheam. <laughs> with many rooms trying to find me. And eventually, she found me at peace in a room. And then she said, and it reminded me of John 14, verse 6, the passage I've been reading. In my father's house are many rooms. So I want to finish and read to you my actual reply to her on WhatsApp. So, Anna, porpoise emoji. (laughs) There's a reason why she's always been my little porpoise. A few months ago, Anna... I had a very intense and powerful prayer time on my own at home. I was reviewing with the Lord the childhood I never had and grieving it. And then Jesus showed me my bedroom where I had hidden most of the time from my mother. He showed me again how he was there with me and praying for me. I used to experience Jesus but not know who he was before I was a Christian. And the rest of the rooms in our house were very dark and oppressive and full of whatever was attached to my mum and the abuse in the house. The Lord showed me that I had left home, escaping those rooms, but I'd not explored the rooms in the Father's house. Jesus, in my prayers, has taken me to the beautiful mansion and said that it's time I explored my inheritance. He showed me the Father was waiting for me in a lounge. I've met the Father. I've known about the Father, but not really known him as Abba. And Abba embraced me and told me I was the son of a prodigal son, and he had sent Jesus to bring me home. It's taken 35 years to get here. The father told me that now he wants me to explore his house, to have the childhood I never had. So in my prayer times, I go back to that place and that house with Jesus. So your dream was from the Lord. How precious for me. Thank you, princess. Love you, daddy. So this Father's Day, as we hope that these parents and children come, that their children come to know God the Father as their Abba, who is God for you? Would you like to know God as your Abba Father? Well, spend time with his family. Find someone in God's family that looks most like Abba Father, the family resemblance. Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And there are some people uh, in church life you might have bumped into some today. Follow them around, spend time with them. But it all starts with this, surrender and becoming like a child. Can we have the worship team back? Would you all like to stand? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these wonderful children again. Oh Lord, we pray that they would know you as Father now, quickly. Thank you for their parents. We pray again for their parents, that their parents would be blessed with many things, but would be blessed with intimacy with you and relationship with you that would flow into their children's lives. And we pray for us as a church, Lord. We said we will so many times. May we experience you and them see you in us. And Lord, may we Discover you more as Abba, Father. Amen. 